What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about low carb versus low fat for performance. But first, make sure you like, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. A new study just came out on low carb versus low fat diets for exercise performance and it's from some pretty heavy hitters in the low carb community, including Tim Noakes, Jeff Volek, my friend Dom D'Agostino and Andrew Kutnick. So they were looking at low carb versus low fat in a crossover design which basically a crossover means each subject does both diet treatments, but they have a washout period between and they test them at the end of both. They were looking at competitive runners and these were people who had to run at least 20 miles a week and they had to have done at least one 1600 meter race. They wanted to see how doing low carb versus low fat affected performance, fat oxidation, body composition, body weight, and a few other markers. Now they did each diet for one month with a washout period, and then they were tested. Now the nice thing about this study was that they were isocaloric. So they were consuming the same total amount of calories, regardless of how many carbohydrates or fats they were consuming. And they assessed performance with a treadmill time trial, as well as repeated sprints. Now what did they find? No difference in performance or body composition or inflammatory markers or HbA1c between the groups. They did see a little bit greater blood glucose reduction in the low carb group, but they saw a greater reduction in LDL cholesterol in the high carb group. So again, there's a trade-off there. Now, I'm not super surprised by these results. Again, it was isocaloric and so it makes sense that we didn't really see big changes in body composition or some of the other markers they were looking at. And we do know that low carb diets tend to elevate or have less of a positive effect on LDL cholesterol, but they tend to have more of a positive effect on lowering blood glucose concentrations. We also know that for the most part, unless you're doing pretty extreme forms of exercise, low carb versus low fat can have similar outcomes in terms of exercise performance. One thing I will ding them on is they did not equate protein between these groups. And I really do feel like it's important to equate protein, especially if you're gonna look at fat mass or body composition. I'm not sure if protein would affect exercise performance, but to me, there's really no good reason to not equate protein. And in fact, in the low carb group, they were consuming 25% more per day. So in the low fat group, they were consuming 110 grams of protein a day, but in the low carb group, they were consuming 140 grams per day. Typically, if you're gonna reduce protein at all, sometimes it's when you're doing a ketogenic diet and you're worried about gluconeogenesis. So they could have put both groups at the same total amount of protein, but they actually gave the low carb group a higher amount of protein. So I'm not really sure what their justification was for that, because again, we do know that protein is the one wild card when it comes to like energy expenditure, and they showed greater increases in fat oxidation in the low carb group. But remember, fat oxidation is not the same thing as fat loss, and they didn't show any difference in fat loss between the two groups. And yes, a low carb diet can raise fat oxidation, this is known, but could higher levels of protein affect that? We don't know because they didn't equate them. So that is one thing I'll ding them on overall thought it was a pretty good study. It kind of fits with some of the other data we have. When it comes to exercise performance, most of the studies looking at higher carb, low fat diets versus low carb, high fat diets either show a neutral or positive benefit to the higher carb diets and either a neutral or negative effect of the low carb diet. Taking this with the summation of the data, I think what my takeaway would be is that if you really enjoy a low carb diet, you like the lifestyle, you feel better on it, and if you need to lose weight, if it helps you facilitate a calorie deficit, it's probably totally fine to do, and it's probably not gonna negatively impact your exercise performance unless you're a highly anaerobic athlete or uh, you're doing some extreme form of exercise. But if you're an elite level athlete who's looking to absolutely maximize their performance, if you wanted to be on the safe side, I would say the safe side is probably going towards a higher carb, lower fat diet or a balanced diet versus a low carb diet. But again, overall, it doesn't appear like there's too many differences. And for most people, I think whatever diet that they can stick to and be consistent with is gonna be the best diet 
for them. Now guys, this is one of the reasons that our app Carbon Diet Coach actually provides multiple different options of dietary preferences so you can consume a low fat diet. You could do a plant-based diet. You could do a balanced diet. You could do a low carb diet. You could also do a ketogenic diet. So we have multiple options on there so that you can choose the diet that best fits your dietary preferences. And not only that, Carbon takes all the messy guesswork out of what to do with your macros. When should you adjust them? If you hit a plateau, how should you adjust them? Carbon does all that for you and it's only 10 bucks a month. It has a 4.8 star rating and 91% of our customers, when polled, said they would recommend the app to a friend. I highly recommend checking it out. It's a great product. Now, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next week.